<laughs> What's going on guys? I wasn't even gonna make this video today but the feedback and the comments under the last video over 200 comments so I thought you know what let me just slap out a video then I can answer most of you lot's questions instead of having to go through each and every comment also in the meantime Ollie's come out now and basically confirmed Rashford is his guy and yeah it makes sense bruv like he started up front for the last two games and I think he just likes his pace directness and he's come out and said that he's going to help with his finishing. Remember in the last video, I said that he had the touch of the nannies about him where he's a bit hit and miss, hot and cold. Like when he's good, he looks really good. But then he can go off the boil and have some bad games. Oli said he's going to help him with his finishing, one-on-one -on -one situations. This is basically what he said. I'm going to work with him on his finishing. He's just got to calm down a bit. He's got a great strike from outside the box and inside the box. We'll just keep working on being cool, calm and passing it past the keeper. Which has pretty much always been my only criticism of Rashford. Like, his decision making. He's very rash. I always said you can't coach temperament. Like, the way Martial slots the goalkeeper opens them up. Like, I genuinely don't believe you can coach that. But, you can definitely improve it. Like, if he's doing it repetitions again and again and again, one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, you would hope that he would definitely improve. Because you've got, like, the likes of, like, a prime Michael Owen was an example. And why I always said that Rooney wasn't a natural finisher, but he was a goal scorer. And people used to say, oh, how can he not be a finisher because he scored X amount of goals? Like, Lukaku's not a finisher, a natural finisher, but he scored a lot of goals, bruv. Like, Michael Owen was a natural finisher. The guy was brilliant at heading the ball. He scored goals with both feet. He can round the goalkeeper. How many times do you see Michael Owen in his prime drop a shoulder round the goalie or just dink it over the goalkeeper? Like He was a natural finisher, clinical. Do you know what I mean? Henri was clinical. Van Nistelrooy was clinical. Do you know what I mean? And like them guys, strikers like that, they're born. I don't think they're manufactured, in it. So it'll be interesting to see what he does with Marcus. But from the looks of it, Marcus is definitely his guy. Also, a man messaged me and was like, yeah, well, if he can improve Rashford, then he can improve Lukaku. But here's the thing with Lukaku. Like, I wouldn't say that his finishing needs a lot of improvement because the guy just slaps the ball as hard as he can. Like, There's no finesse about Lukaku's game, bruv. Like, he's a box striker, man. He's a tapping merchant, if I'm honest. He is. But the big faults with his game are not that. They're not his composure or his finishing because actually his strike conversion isn't too bad. That's for a combination of reasons. One, the guy makes sure that he's 100% confident before he strikes the ball. You never see him having speculative shots or anything. Like he'll control it, he'll slow down and he'll literally take six touches before he shoots because he's off balance most of the time. Like his technique's poor, everything's just poor. Like and he just side slaps it with the side foot. Like a man said to me today, um, the way Pogba's made man eat their words, watch when Lukaku comes back and does a madness. I goes, bruv, I said to man, the only madness he's going to do is slap him one of the stewards in the back of the head fam, because he's just wayward. Lukaku's main problem is that he's a crap footballer. It's got nothing to do with his finishing. Like at Manchester United, you have to have more about you than just being able to play the way you're facing and play facing goal. That's why Chicharito got sold. Because Hernandez is a much better poacher and finisher than Lukaku. But his all-around game was not good enough for a club like Manchester United. You can't just be a goal scorer, bruv. You can't. Even when Andy Cole came from Newcastle, they told him, bagging 40 goals a season ain't enough to keep you in this team. You need to improve your all-round game. Lukaku's all-round game is piss poor. And at 25, it's not going to improve, in it. So... I just think he's just not good enough. So yes, guys, onto your comments now. There are a few players, names that popped up so much. So I managed to make a list from them. We have Jones, Damian, Fellaini, Rojo, Valencia, Ashley Young. And Lukaku popped up a few times. Firstly, I wanted to say why I said Mata was not because I want him out of the club. Because actually, he's one of my favourite players. Like I like a certain type of player. I like him, like Daily Blind. I like cultured confident calm composed technical footballers but the reason why i said one matter was for a few reasons one he's 30 years old he's past his prime like he's past his best 
he is too good to be a bit part player, I think. I think that he can go somewhere and be a first team player, make an impact, play week in, week out, because he's good enough. Also, the way that we're trying to play now, in the system, I believe his best position is the position that Pogba's in at the moment. And that's that free roll down the middle. And you can't give that to one man. Like, no way. Because Pogba, like, you can't drop Pogba. This is his best position. Finally, Pogba's been playing where he's meant to be in playing the whole time we bought him. So, the only thing is, either matters a bit part player from the bench and he replaces Pogba in that position when we want to rotate. If we want to drop Pogba back and play him deeper and waste him like we've been doing for the last three years. Or, like he's surplus to requirements, in my opinion. Like most teams these days want to play inverted wingers. We've been linked with Douglas Costa. We've, um, we've got Mason Greenwood who can definitely play from that right hand side and he's left footed with pace. We've also got Chong as well. I would have wanted Mares before he went to Manchester City, but the bottom line is, it's looking like they're looking for someone that is a specialist down that right-hand side to play as an inverted winger or a pacey forward. And Mata doesn't fit the description for either of that. So for me, in the side at 30 years old, he hasn't signed a new contract. It looks like he's kind of obsolete at the moment. And that's unfortunate because he's a top, top, top player, but... I'm saying, at 30 years old, he's still decent. We could get a decent bit of money for him. Like, if I was in charge, I'd definitely be looking at seeing what Greenford can do, Greenwood even, can do from the right-hand side, Chong can do from the right-hand side. And if the rumours are true, because we've been linked with Douglas Costa and there was talk of Ian Robin on a free, which I wouldn't really want because of his wages, but it's free. But either way, it just seems like yeah, Matter's just... I just don't see where he fits in. And why I didn't say Matic, as in urgently, like, Matic is someone that we can deal with later. The reason why I say this is, for us to be at the top level and be competing, I think that we can't have him in the team. Like, he can be a squad player, but that's all he can be. Like, we've seen that Pogba in that floating, supporting striker role, this is his best position. Like, we need a ball-playing central midfielder long-term. But in terms of January, I wouldn't get rid of Matic because he's the best of a bad bunch outside of outside of Pogba. Do you know what I mean? Like, Ander Herrera and Matic, those are our only three, play, um, three midfielders that are doing it at the moment. Fred is quality, but he hasn't adapted yet. So when I'm looking at Matic, like, he's, he's too slow, he's stiff, his passing range is terrible. He's not. He's, he's just not the ideal candidate. But at the same time, get rid of him now and bring in who in January? No one. So I think for the long term, we do need like a ball-playing midfielder, the likes of like a Jorginho. Do you know what I'm saying? Someone like, like a Xabi Alonso or a Fabregas or something would have been good. Like that ilk of player, not now because they're too old, but that kind of player, like a Tony Cruz kind of player. Someone who can get their foot on the ball and get the ball to Pogba. Because a lot of the time before, he's had to drop too deep because these guys don't have a range of passing to find him. There is no Carrick. There is no Skulls in this team. Pogba was asked to be the Carrick and the Skulls, but then also get up and score goals and defend and do everything, which was the big problem in the first place. So I'd say I'd keep Matic for now, but I haven't just forgotten that he's shit just because like we've had a few good results. Like I still don't rate the guy. All right, guys. Now, Quagmire, a man like Phil Jones. Like, I ain't even gonna lie. That guy's about as useful as a bus stop on Christmas Day, fam. Like, I can't stand him. There was a few people saying in the comment section, yeah, like, he's, he's had a few good games and all he's changed him and that. But Phil Jones is crap, blood. He always does this. The guy's got a mistake in him. Like, for me, Phil Jones is a decent squad player. That's all he is. Like, him and Smalling were brought in as squad players. They were supposed to develop into something and they didn't, innit? And then what happened was, by default, they got promoted to first-team centre-backs, starting centre-backs. They were never that good. So Alec Ferguson had a vision for these two. It didn't quite come off, but Phil Jones is terrible. Injury-prone, terrible feet as well. Like, Smalling's got shit feet too. But, do you know what I mean? At least Smalling like, will kind of get up the back of a striker. And he's just less clumsy, isn't it? They're both not great, but... Smalling's the better of the two, so I would definitely get rid of Phil Jones. I agree with you lot on that one. 
110%. Damian's come up. And for me, I said this before on um, the United Stand on the phone-in. I'd keep Damian. Like, loads of people forget how good Damian was under LVG. I don't think that uh, um, Damian's a crap player. I just think that he's been mismanaged. That's all it is. The reason why I'd keep Damian is for the same reason why I would keep Ashley Young at the moment in the squad. Damian can play left fullback, right fullback. He can also play left centre back or right centre back in a three. And he can fill in that centre half, bro. He's a natural defender, in it, Like Italian, proper, like dark arts are defending. Them man don't play games. Do you know what I mean? They'll pull you down and ask questions after. So I feel like you need a defender like that. And you saw, like, in the bigger games, when Jose wanted um, someone to do a job, he would bring in Damian because Damian knows how to defend. So in the bigger games, where maybe we're not going to go gung-ho, I think that he could feature, bro. And he's still young. Italian international, I saw him mark Raheem Sterling out the game before we signed him when England played Italy. So I know that there's a player in there. So that coupled with the fact we're not going to get decent money for him anyway, I would definitely keep Damien. Next up, a man that we can all agree on, Marouane Fellaini, bruv, the beanstalk. For me, he's got a go, innit? Like, Maureen tried to turn him into some CDM centre mid, he's none of the above, like Fellaini is most effective playing in a supporting striker role when you go direct to him and he can be like a wall, like a pivot, like what Lukaku was meant to be for us, like up, bruv, man's got a better chest than Pamela Anderson, Reed boy, man just bring that down, bring people into the game, that's, that's what he's good at, we're Manchester United, we don't need to do that, you know what I mean, if we want to apply pressure, we, we let the fullbacks bomb on, and we just overload teams and push them back. Like, we don't need to be going direct, bruv. So, for me, he's got no use in this team. Like, he's a plan C at best or a plan D. Like, if they say six minutes added time or something like that. And a man's like, one nil down. Then bring in Fellaini for injury time to go long. If you've got a substitution left. But other than that, I don't even want to see him, bruv. And I think having him as an option, like, it tempts managers to do that, innit? To go in there like it does. So, I would just bin him. Marcus Rojo, a lot of you lot aren't a fan. Me, I would have to disagree again for the similar reason to Damian. He's young and he's multifunctional. The guy can play left back, he can play left full back, and he can play left centre back and centre back. And he's ball playing. He's not afraid to, to take the ball out the back and pass it and dribble with it. Like, I like that. I believe that he just needs to be coached. He's a bit rash, isn't it? He is a bit rash, but technically he's a good player. So, And he's got a good switch ball as well, that diagonal that he likes to play from left to right. So I think that Rojo, with the right kind of nurturing, is good enough, bruv. Like, again, just like Damian, he's an international player. These guys start for their country, so they're not that shit, bruv. It's just that they've been mismanaged. I think that um, Jose liked Rojo at the beginning. And again, he made a mistake and then we just never saw man again. And that same thing happened to Lindelof. It's just that Lindelof forced his way back in because we had injuries. And then his form managed to keep him in. But I think that Rojo has been mismanaged. So I would definitely keep Rojo. Plus, I do like him. He's a bit of a prick, bruv. Like, he will kick you up in the air. And I think sometimes you need that. All right, Valencia. Look at this, yeah? The reason why I say that I wouldn't get rid of Valencia... You look at his age, he's another international again, captain. He shouldn't be starting for us or anywhere near the starting lineup. He shouldn't. But saying that, look how much better Ashley Young has looked with a direct manager. Look how much better he's looked. So, it would be interesting to see Valencia at right back under Oli. Would he cut back as much, play the safe pass? Maybe he might actually cross and start taking players on. Like, who knows? Then you've got another player. Defensively, he is suspect, but... As a right back coming off the bench, he's not a bad option. For me, Delo should be our first choice right back. But Valencia is not a bad second choice. Like, what other teams, if you look at the top six now, who's their second choice right back? Like, you couldn't name them. You couldn't name them. So for me, I'd keep him as a squad player. Like, most of the time, maybe he won't make the match day squad, but I'll keep him for his experience. And also, just for the option, I wouldn't get rid of him. But I do agree with you, like, he ain't good enough to be starting. Ashley Young, bruv. Again, good to have in the dressing room. He's at that age now. Giggs, he played till he was 40 at the club, bruv. Like, I think it's valuable to have a certain amount of experience in the changing room. So, again, Ashley Young, when he got his new deal, everyone was like, what's going on? 
I'm cool with him getting the new deal. Ashley Young's a good squad player to have. I don't want to see him starting either. He can play left back, right back. He can play left wing if you need him and right wing. So he's good to have, like he's fit. Even for his age, he gets up and down. He's got a decent delivery on him, on him sometimes. And he's just good to have around. Like we have got a young, like a young core of the team. So it's good to have experience. But again, don't want man nowhere near the starting lineup. But you gotta think like a manager. Would you why would you get rid of Ashley Young? Like it doesn't really make sense. And last but not least, Lukaku. I would get rid of him. I 100 percent agree. And the reason why I would get rid of the guy is because of his age. We would get a lot of money for him, and also he's on a lot of wages. Like players like Ashley Young and Valencia, and that, these guys are not on the big money. Lukaku's on the big money. Lukaku's on 250. Like, around 250 grand a week, yeah? And he's rubbish, bruv. Like, it's that simple. Like, he's a very limited striker. Like, loads of people can point at, yeah, his goal record and this, that and the other. When you're playing for Everton and West Brom and teams like that, teams teams will teams will um, push up. They will leave space in behind. They will. Like, it's inevitable. When you play for Manchester United, a lot of the time, teams sit back and you have to have a bit of cuteness about you and a bit of guile about you. Being a tapping merchant at Old Trafford, yeah, on 250 grand a week, bruv, for the size of him, it don't make sense. We could get a player half his size, twice as agile, to do the same tapping job as him. And that could offer us other stuff around the squad. And be able to play on the left, be able to play on the right. Like, Lukaku can only play down the middle. So, because of that, he's got one position. He's a specialist kind of player. And his speciality is dead, bruv. Like, we don't need it. So, because he's not multifunctional, he's young, he's on a lot of money, I'll just get rid of him, bruv. Like, there's talk of Juventus trying to look into replace Mandzukic. And boy, like, bruv, 60 million upwards, you just take it and you, you cut your losses with Lukaku because he's dead food. So, I'm 100% with you lot on that. So, yes, guys, that was all your players, man. Big up for all the comments, man. Like, I really didn't expect that many. And, yeah, if these things keep coming up and you want videos... Just leave your comments and then I'll just slap them out there and then you lot can keep it interactive. We like to do that anyway. Like even when I was speaking to Mark, I just bought myself a new mic. Because I know you, a lot of you lot were talking about the sound, sound quality. So man's going to improve that. And also a green screen. Because when I'm not at the games, I'm going to be doing some stuff for Mark as well. So yeah, we just like to keep it interactive. We're a fan channel. At the end of the day, like we're not just here to push our opinions on you. We want to hear what you guys think as well, man, and keep it that way. So drop a comment. Just let me, anything you want, let me know if you agree, you disagree, players you might add in there, or players that you might want to you want to see come in. Like, what do you think of um, Greenwood on the right? What do you think of Chong on the right? What do you think of this being linked with Douglas or Iron Robin? Would you take them? Like, let me know what you guys think. And make sure you like the video. Share the video. As I said, do whatever you want with it, man. Keep it interactive. I appreciate it. Also, make sure you check out that um, Blood Brothers review if you haven't already with my brother Expressions. we got a weekly show coming to YouTube. A weekly Premier League show. Um, Dispatch of the day, blood. So, it's just going to be like a match of the day Premier League kind of roundup. But, obviously, guys will be getting sent for you know how it is. So we're going to do one part on his channel, one part on my channel. So the part that comes up on my channel, I'm going to put the link in the description. So big up, guys. Man, we'll catch you soon. <laughs>